first part of this course consists of a technique known as Mobius inversion. Before I jump into Mobius inversion, let me give you some simple examples of formulae that come from Mobius inversion. Uh, but first some notation. So I'll use n to denote the set of non-negative integers. P to denote the set of positive integers. And C to denote the set of complex numbers. In this lecture, you can uh, replace the complex numbers by the real numbers or the rational numbers or even by polynomials in a variable. Uh, basically, you can replace the complex numbers by any commutative unital ring. But if you don't know what a commutative unital ring is, don't worry about it right now. Just think about complex numbers or real numbers. So here's the first example of Mobius inversion. Suppose you have two functions, f, g, from non-negative integers to c, uh, such that g of x is summation y less than or equal to x, f of x. Then this is equivalent to the formula that f of x is equal to g of x minus g of x minus 1. So this tells you how from this relation on the left hand side you can recover f or write f in terms of g um, as f of x is g of x minus g of x minus 1. So this is inverting a relationship based on inequality. And uh, this is pretty easy to prove. Uh, this g of x is going to be f of 0 plus f of x. This is going to be f of 0 plus f of x minus 1. All but this term here cancel out uh, and so you get f of x. Okay, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Example 2. Let's take um, f and g to be um, now functions on uh, n cross n, the Cartesian square of n to the complex numbers. So you can think of this as ordered pairs of non-negative integers. And as before, suppose we have a relationship. So here earlier we had uh, g of x is y less than or equal to x, sum of f of x. Now suppose we have a relationship of the form g of x1, x2, now it's a function of two variables, is equal to summation y1 less than or equal to x1, y2 less than or equal to x2, f of y1, y2. Then, how do we recover f from g? So it turns out that this is equivalent to the formula that f of x1, x2, it's, it's similar to the previous formula, but there's a slight twist in it. So this is g of x1, x2 minus g of x1 minus 1, x2 minus g of x1, x2 minus 1 and then plus 2 times g of x1 minus 1, x2 minus 1. Um, I'll let you think about the details of the proof of this. Uh, but basically... Uh, you can visualize this as follows. So here I'm showing you why uh, f of 3 comma 2 is g of 3 comma 2 minus g of 3 comma 1 minus g of 2 comma 2 plus g of 2 comma 1. So what is uh, g of 3 comma 2? Well, so I've drawn the lattice n cross n uh, pairs, ordered pairs of uh, non-negative integers as a two-dimensional array of numbers. It's an infinite array. Okay, and... Um, and f of 3 comma 2 is the sum of the values assigned to uh, all the uh, g values which appear inside this quadrant delineated by red lines. So, uh, so that's g of 3 comma 2. And now from that, if I subtract g of 3 comma 1, I'm removing everything except what's in the last column of this red quadrant. And if I remove g of 2 comma 2, I'm removing everything except uh, what's in the last row of this red quadrant. So what have I removed? I've removed 
everything except in the last row, everything except in the last column. So all I'm left with is, well, almost I'm left with G3 too, but there's stuff that I've removed two times and that's the stuff in the uh, black quadrant. So I'll add it back again. And so what I get is F of 3 comma 2 is G of 3 comma 2 minus G of 3 comma 1 minus G of 2 comma 2 plus G of 2 comma 1. And that uh, is an example of this Mobius inversion in two variables. Um, the last but historically most important example that I'll show you uh, comes from number theory. And this one says that suppose you have f and g are two functions from positive integers to complex numbers. And we have now in the slight twist f of n is summation and rather than saying less than or equal to, I'll say d divides n g of t. Then this is equivalent to g of n is summation d divides n and uh, there's a certain function here which is called the Mobius function mu of n by d f of t where this Mobius function mu is given by So suppose you take uh, uh, as follows. So what you do is you take the number n and uh, you write down its prime factorization p1 raised to a1 pk raised to ak. You know that every positive integer can be uniquely written as a product of prime powers uh, where these p1, p2, pk are distinct primes. And a1, A2, AK are uh, positive integers. Um, for example, if you take N equals 1, then all these A1, A2, AK are 0. Uh, if you take N to be a prime, then you have only one term and the corresponding A will be 1. So then mu is defined by mu of N is equal to minus 1 raised to k if a1 equal to a k equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So this is a number theoretic definition depending on the prime factorization of n. Mu is 0 if n has is divisible by the square of any prime otherwise it's plus or minus 1. A uh, very standard application of this is to compute Euler's Totian function. If you define phi of n to be the number of integers uh, k less than or equal to n, let's say between uh, 0 and n minus 1, let's say 0 less than or equal to k less than n, such that the GCD of k and n is equal to 1 then what you can show is that n is equal to summation d divides n phi d. And this turns out to be equivalent to a formula that computes phi, which says that phi of n is equal to summation d divides n mu of, now I just apply this formula, here my uh, g is phi and f of n is just n, so I'll take mu of n by d times t. So these are three um, standard examples of Mobius inversion and uh, we'll be doing this more generally. Uh, the things to remember is that Mobius inversion in all these examples uh, what is involved is uh, firstly a partially ordered set, a notion of less than or equal to. In this last example uh, which you could call classical Mobius inversion, which is the case that Mobius himself considered. The partial order is that of divisibility. And so, but in general, we just denote this partial order by this. And uh, the Mobius inversion is a formula which uh, relates uh, to identities. It says something like this.
I'm just giving you a vague idea here. We'll make all this more precise in the next few lectures.